Additionally, voting systems are, by design, meant to be used as closed systems that are not networked, meaning they, they are not connected to the internet. It is technologically impossible to see votes being counted in real time or to flip them. Additionally, voting systems are, by design, meant to be used as closed systems that are not networked, meaning they, they are not connected to the internet. It is technologically impossible to see votes being counted in real time or to flip them. Krebs, you know, I've, I've obviously, you've had, you've testified here on this specific issue, uh, the potential for foreign interference to have an impact on our elections. Um, we've had private conversations. You know, I, I've always categorized the ability to, for foreign, foreigners to interfere with the election, kind of three, three buckets. You know, one is changing the vote tallies on the machine. Secondly, is hacking into voter registration files, which could cause all kinds of problems, but quite honestly, probably be detect detected on election day when there's chaos. And then third, what I think is a more serious problem, the, the one more difficult to detect, is uh, you know basically the use of social media. Um, you quoted the you know which I can't remember was that CISA group that uh, declared this the most secure election in our history? Yes, sir. That was the Joint uh, Government Coordinating Council and Sector Coordinating Council statement. Okay. What well, one of the reasons I've always stated, based on our discussions, your testimony that yeah. To my knowledge, it's almost impossible to change the vote tally by hacking into these computers was you know, based on the fact that, well, these things are not connected. And most of them don't even have the capability of being connected to the Internet. You know, based on all these allegations people are talking to, it sounds like some of these machines are showing the tabulators can and, and are connected to the Internet. So can you just kind of explain to me what, again, I, I just, the, the whole voting machine tabulation Internet connections is just a huge, confusing mess. Can you speak to that? So I think it's important to step back and, and actually look at how votes are cast in the country, particularly with paper ballots. And that, regardless of any Internet connections, regardless of any foreign hacking, as long as you've got the paper receipt. Okay, but but let, me, let me stop you there. I, I, I acknowledge that, yes, the, the paper backup is the, is the control if it's used. Uh, that was going to be my next question. So set aside the control of the machine process. What is capable? You know, again, I kind of want to know on, on what basis, you know, what aspects of this is the most secure? Because when you listen to Mr. Troopas and Mr. Benal, I mean, there, 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 was, there was fraud in this election. There, I don't th have any doubt about that. There was fraud. We just don't know the extent and we don't know what the remedy would be when identified. OK, so, again, just speak to the computer aspect of this, the connection to the inter internet, the, the possibility if these machines are connected to the internet, or if in the certification process, because I think uh, Mr. Palmer in our discussions, you were talking a little bit about the fact that you know, people attempted to change the, the controls or the, the program in these computers inside that certification process. But you know, Mr. Krebs, just talk to the computer aspect of this, because again, it's the most difficult and confusing aspect of these allegations. It, yeah, there, there are a number of different systems and machines and computers involved in the entirety of the election process from registration through ballot design through ballot printing to actual voting uh, into the tabulation and post-election process um, throughout you're going to particularly where a vote is cast uh, on election day those machines tend to and should not be uh, connected to the internet certainly as a best practice but but some have the capability don't they uh, some may have uh, modems uh, that are typically uh, disabled, but in certain states, I believe in Wisconsin, some are temporarily activated to transmit, uh, transmit some counts. But again, when you have paper and you can conduct a post-election audit, if, right? if, again, if they're, if they're it's conducted, it's an important right? security control that, oh, absolutely. that technology and elections are used to facilitate access and increase accuracy of the process. But election officials are very careful that Technology is not a single point of failure in that there are security controls before, during, and after the vote process. Well, now, we'll, so, yeah, fi finish just asking the computer thing. We'll come back. My time's already expired, but we'll come back to the, you know, how many audits, the statistical sampling, that type of thing, to use those paper backups to the electronic voting. But, you know, fi finish this right. the, answer. And there, 
you know, as you move out from election day, there will be tabulators that uh, that may have internet connections to transmit the vote from the precinct to the county level to the state. Again, security c- controls in place, and as long as you have the paper, can't hack paper, right, right, right. you can run that process. But, the, but those tabulators are connected on election day because that's how they transmit the data to the counties and also into the unofficial. Uh, in some cases, yes, sir. Yeah, that's right. okay. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll, I'll follow up, uh, Senator. Additionally, voting systems are, by design, meant to be used as closed systems that are not networked, meaning they, they are not connected to the internet. It is technologically impossible to see votes being counted in real time or to flip them. Additionally, voting systems are, by design, meant to be used as closed systems that are not networked, meaning they they are not connected to the internet. It is technologically impossible to see votes being counted in real time or to flip them. Uh, Melissa, thanks for coming on and, and talking to us tonight. Um, you know, we have a, uh, a lot going on in the state of Michigan. One big thing is the testimony of John Polos tonight, uh, today, before the Michigan Senate, where the head of Dominion, where you used to work, and he mm-hmm. said many things before the uh, Michigan Senate today, the most important of which is that the paper ballots back up a lot of the claims made by whistleblowers like you. Um, Obviously, you're the main Dominion whistleblower, but there are a lot of uh, claims of election fraud and voter fraud that have have happened that uniquely you can speak to. And I I know you contacted me saying that there were several things that Mr. Polo said that were not true. And I was wondering if you could if you could tell us what those things are. Absolutely. So, um, I just want to start off with um, saying that uh, he spoke numerous times of the steel ballot boxes being under the tabulating machines and the ballots falling directly into these steel locked ballot boxes. Um, that was not the case in at the TCF Center. At the TCF Center, the steel ballot boxes were behind the workers and they were open and available to the workers as well as the ballot batches until they were given the next set of batches. So that is one huge problem that he is saying, you know, that these ballots are getting dropped into a steel lockbox directly from the tabulating machine when that is not the case, because what that does is what he's debunking, trying to debunk is the fact that these people were running these batches of ballots over and over and over again. And if what he were saying was the truth in which these, he's saying that these batches or these ballots were being dropped directly into these steel lock boxes, then they wouldn't be been able to um, run these ballots like they were right. over and over and over again, but right. they were. And like anybody who was at the TCF center can, can, um, you know, um, verify that the steel ballot boxes were behind the workers and eventually they started using those steel ballot boxes as a barrier. So poll watchers couldn't see the, um, the process, you know, and I spoke, I spoke about that numerous times, right. But, yeah. So I'd also like to um clarify, you know, um with his statements being so false. Um he stated that none of the machines were um connected to the internet. Right. Um I do have in which I know it's already out there, I gave Patrick Colbeck permission to um release the audio uh recording that I recorded it is um a 53 minute video I'm, I'm sorry it's a 53 minute audio recording of the dominion training session um right. in which they admit that all of their hardware is connected to the internet right and also um and, the and forensic, most, for the, for the, the benefit f- of people who maybe don't know that you know that's former michigan state senator patrick Colbeck who was at the TCF Center along with several other people. 
Um, Correct. And, and you didn't know uh, Senator Colbeck at the time, right? I did not. I did not, no. And, and I met they, him after. And they observed not only that the Dominion machines were networked, but they observed mm -hmm. the, that network connected to an on-site modem that they, they observed broadcasting. Correct. Correct. And, um, you know, also we observed, Patrick brought it to my attention when I was on the stage. I, I like you said, I did not know Patrick at the time. Um, after I wrote my first affidavit and gave it to Patrick, <laughs> um, somebody called me to call Patrick and give it to him. Uh, that's when I met Patrick, but he told me who he was and he said, I'm the one who was standing at the stage asking Nick, which would be my manager, which would be the uh, co-owner of Dominion, um, if these machines are connected to the internet and uh, they wouldn't give him an answer. So he started asking, um, you know, city officials, um, uh, Daniel um, Baxter. And, um, so they started getting really frustrated with him and he said, all you have to do is run your mouse over that, you know, icon at the bottom of the screen where it shows, a, um, a, a Wi-Fi connection, an internet connection. And, uh, apparently, um, one of the city officials, I'm not sure exactly who said, um, you're just going to have to trust us. And, uh, Patrick Colbeck said, well, I don't. And he said, well, that's just too bad. So um, they never verified that. And uh, with the forensic examination that was done today um, and the report that was released, it was confirmed that they, they were connected to the internet. Um, the, forensic, the forensic examination confirmed that, um, in which I don't know how this guy just got on here and lied about it again after this forensic examination was confirmed. But we both we all know that our Secretary of State um, in Michigan tried to block that um, record from being released, but they got it released. Um, so he also and, spoke of I'm sorry. Then, for the for the benefit of people who may not know, could you give what's the impact of that? Like, why why is that so important? Why is I'm sorry, what so important? That if these machines were connected to the internet, what 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 impact okay. could that have? Uh, that has a huge impact. First off, um, th when they're connected to the internet, um, that opens up a huge door to being hacked. Um, that's the, I think that's the main concern is the door it opens to these, um, vote, the voting hardware being hacked. And, um, there are people that obviously, especially on election night would look to do that. Um, Another door it would open is for just mistakes in general. Um, you know, uh, the, the voting, the counts being in real time. Um, I know that that's a problem somewhere along the lines. It's, it, it, it opens the door to a lot of issues and that's why they keep denying it. Um, in, in he of, did. I'm sorry to stop and interrupt you, no, no. but your your testimony for people who you know we, sometimes we got to put all these pieces together. You saw a big data a, a data loss in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. You knew yes. that these Dominion contractors were off site at another warehouse uh, in the right. middle of the night, and at 4 a.m. a big truck of ballots shows up eight hours after the the, the deadline. And so those physical ballots come in, it's a reasonable interpretation that they were watching the results with these internet connected absolutely. Dominion machines. It absolutely is. They saw the numbers they needed, they brought yes. the paper ballots in, they put them yep. in the ballot boxes, they're there. Yep, and absolutely. And so a, a recount, you know, that's one thing that Mr. Polo said today was, well, there are paper ballots, and so all of these allegations, yeah. you know, they really don't I matter. loved how he said that. Right. He see he's tr what he's trying to do is he's trying to get people to believe him by saying that he's agreeing with a recount. Right. Well, you know, he can agree with the recount, but a recount's not going to work. A recount is not going to work because there were there were ballots over, you know, they say 60,000 
brought in at 4 a.m. We don't know if that's the true number. Nobody knows the true number, but the, the, that's a roundabout number. And we know that the day, I, I, I personally know that when they were speaking of this data loss is when they figured out that Trump was ahead over 100,000 votes. It wasn't a data loss. That's when they found out. And that's when they sent Samuel to the warehouse to assist with these ballots, meaning filling them in uh, straight Biden and to assist with the numbers they that because they got the count, they got how high it was, they got scared, and um, they sent him over there to assist. He was gone for approximately three hours. When he returned, I asked him where he was at. Um, he told me that he was at the warehouse, and I asked him, you know, what what is this warehouse? He said it's called the Chicago Warehouse. He got a little bit aggravated with me, so I just kind of left him alone. Anyways, but um, Nick sent him over there, and um, that's the reason Nick was in Detroit. And that's another thing that this guy said today, the CEO of Dominion, which I think is really funny, too, that he came out and spoke now when he had the, the time to take in everybody's affidavit. He had the time to listen to it on TV. He had the time to hear what, what everybody was saying. He had the time to put all of his stories together, you know, and then he finally comes out. And when he comes out, one thing I noticed him saying was he used my quote, which Nick quoted me. And when I said, this is a huge problem, when I saw somebody running these um, bat batches through the tabulator numerous times, I said, we have a huge problem here. And Nick said, Melissa, we're not here to run their election. We are here to assist with IT. Well, this CEO of Dominion today, numerous times used that quote. He said, we don't run the election. And he used that quote because that was used with me. Right. And it was such a significant thing said to somebody, to an American who, right. who votes, you know, right. um, you don't say that to someone, but, um, cause it's not their election, it's ours. And so I'm looking at these notes right now. And, um, one other quick thing, if I, if I could, yeah, you know, the, yeah. one, one issue that, uh, he, he brought up, and I think a lot of people have brought up in regards to mm -hmm. your statements is that a judge found you not credible. And that's judge, Correct. uh, Tim uh, Kenny, uh, the Wayne County uh, yeah. judge. And you, you mentioned real briefly earlier that he really looked at all the, all the affidavits and he said, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have experience running an election. Right. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yes. But, but I've also been told, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that the Michigan Supreme Court has instructed him to hold an, a hearing and really determine the credibility without just looking at the affidavits. And so your day in court has really never been heard. No, my day in court has never been heard. Um, you're correct with that. Um, well, and another thing with ju that Judge Kenny is that, uh, as I stated before, um, you know, he did mention that my affidavit doesn't square up was his words with mm -hmm. um, all the other affidavits. Well, um, it wouldn't, it wouldn't because right. I was working for Dominion. I was on the stage with the city officials in Dominion. This is the first time today that we've had another Dominion employee come out and talk. And my affidavit, I talk of a data loss. I speak of Samuel going to this warehouse for three hours. Right. Well, the poll watchers wouldn't have known that. They wouldn't have known who Samuel is. They wouldn't have known that he was being sent to the Detroit Department of Elections, to, you know, right. for three hours to assist with these ballots. Um, you know, I have a friend that's been sending me pictures and, um, these pictures are crazy. They're from outside of the department of elections on the third and the fourth, and they are Penske trucks, um, moving trucks and the back of them are open and they are full of ballots. The city of Detroit trucks are sitting right behind them, guarding them. Um, he has pictures of people carrying 
boxes of ballots with their whole and with their entire faces covered and you can only see their eyes. Um, he chased a couple of them um, driving and um, I have all the pictures. There's over 30 of them and I have written statements from these people in which I did uh, send to Rudy Giuliani and Patrick Kolbeck because right. um, Patrick Kolbeck has helped out a lot and he, he has his whole heart in this and yep. whatever I give him, he, he tries to get it up there. So I, I sent him all that information and, you know, there's so many people who care about this election and um, you know, it's just, it's, it's mind blowing that now that we finally have somebody from Dominion that comes out, it's somebody that's a CEO. He's saying that the company has never, never, never the soft. He's saying the software was not ever created in Venezuela. There's proof it was created in Venezuela by two men to sway an election. Um, he's saying that it, it doesn't have anything to do with Smartmatic. I have a binder from um, Dominion that that explains the Smartmatic uh, software completely, completely. If it doesn't have anything to do with Smartmatic, why would they be talking about it? Well, and and maybe we should explain too that when he, you know, he people can be kind of tricky with words, and he said yeah. that the Dominion software doesn't come from Venezuela, which is true. Mm -hmm. But it's not mm -hmm. true that the source code that was used to develop that was derived from Smartmatic, which was, you know, they, they fixed the election yeah. in Venezuela. And so he was. it's unfortunate that, you know, they can, they can split hairs. And if you don't know enough, you know, if you're not, if you haven't worked for Dominion or if you haven't followed the story very closely, you can, you can end up thinking that it was a denial, but it was really just him speaking in uh, kind of a forked tongue. Right. Yeah. And he did that the whole time. Um, he, like I said, he has had very, uh, uh, so much time right. since December 1st right. to, to, to get his story together. And he's heard all of our, all of our um, affidavits in court right. that we, that we all went into court and spoke in front of that same, in front of those same people on December 1st. And, um, he, he's had, so today's the, what, 15, he's had 15 days to prepare what he's going to say. Right. And that's just not right. It's just not right. And they need, they needed to be asking him, where have you been? You right. know, where are these other people? Um, why was Nick in, in, uh, at the TCF center? Why was Nick, he lied about how many people were, were working. He said there was one contract employee and I believe he said two, two Dominion employees. There was two contract employees and three Dominion employees. Yep. Three. So there was a total of five. And he said there was a total of three, which, you know, I mean, I, he's, he's trying to get rid of Nick saying Nick wasn't there because wherever, like I said, Nick is, is a very significant location. Right. Um, yeah, I this it's just to me it's insane and um what he he's trying to do is he is trying to say that he agrees with a recount but a recount would never work. Like I right. said it would never work. We need a forensic. We need you know to be honest with you, I don't need, I I honestly think that we need a revote. which is really hard, I guess, to get, but to me. And that is, that is a, a tall mountain to climb, but um, certainly a, a forensic audit like they, they just recently performed in Antrim County. Um, mm -hmm. And it's been interesting to see that, um, you know, their response to Antrim County, I think, is, is similar to their response to you, which is they, they either dismiss it or make fun of it and then ignore it, you know? Right, right. Exactly. It's like, so we have no, we, we, what are we, what are we supposed to do? You know what I mean? When these people are either saying, oh, they're not credible. And how, how, how in the world can you say that someone that saw something with their own eyes and there's groups of them that have the same thing written down and saw the same thing. Right. Um, well, are incredible. The things that you've described. Why? You know, 
so much of what you've described, you know, really doesn't have much to do with the machines, right? You observed ballots right. being rerun. There are many other witnesses at TCF who saw the exact same thing. The internet, activity, as we mentioned, you know, Patrick Kolbeck, among others, you know, I, there are several other people who were with, with uh, Senator Kolbeck and observed the same thing. And so, Correct. you know, it's, it's frustrating, I think, to, to follow this story and to see people who have a lot of courage, like yourself, stand up, say the right thing, obviously at a great personal cost, and, um, and you're corroborated. Your, your statements are corroborated. Right. We haven't heard from anybody who says that those machines weren't networked. Who are they, who is there? Exactly. Right. Um, well, you know, I, I love, I do, I really love um, Senator Lacido. He, he's, he's just great. Um, you know, he came up to me after the hearing and he said, um, he said, Melissa, you, you have some very, 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 um, the information you have, he said, you don't know what you have. He said, this information is, is very critical to, you know, cause in the hearing, he spoke to me a lot and then he walked past me coming out. Um, he, he did question, um, that CEO of Dominion a lot today. And, um, I sent them a lot of information. I sent them the whole packet from Dominion. I sent them everything they requested. I sent them and they requested a lot. Um, because I have nothing to hide. I have nothing to hide. When you're telling the truth, it's not going to change. Just like the other witness behind me said when we were with uh, Giuliani. She said, you know, when you're telling the truth, it's not going to change. And she said that to Cynthia uh, Johnson. And, um, you know, when she was going on her rampages about um, nobody was there from the city of Detroit. Who cares if nobody was there from the city of, that grew up in the city of Detroit? That's not what this is about. It's not about that. It's about, um, we're, it's Wayne County. These, these are Wayne County votes, not just city of Detroit. Right. You know, I mean, and, and, and even if they were, so why would it matter? Their, their votes. And, and this is an election. It's everybody's election, not just Detroit's. Well, it seems like just one of those uh, red herrings that can get people distracted away from the, the central questions of whether or not those machines were connected to the internet you know, whether or not those machines were secure, whether or not there was a, a, a ballot dump in the middle of the night, uh, where those extra ballots came from. And then I think, you know, importantly, that, that goes in unanswered in all of this is what, what was the real reason the city of Detroit covered up the, the windows at the TCF Center? You know, what is the real reason? Exactly. Well, I had to leave before that. Be I, I, I knew that it, it was getting very rowdy in there and I have two young children. Um, I was scheduled to come back, but uh, Samuel had texted me and said, we're done counting. We don't need you to come back. This was around three o'clock. Um, that right after that was when those boxes were being put up on the windows. Um, so I went downtown to the stop the count um, rally in front of the TCF. And, you know, I met some very um, important people there that day. And I spoke on the news um, on Channel 2 that day, too, in regards to what I witnessed. Um, you know, in him saying numerous times, oh, our company is a bipartisan company. No, it's not. Because I'll tell you right now that it's in my affidavit that I was, there was a point that I got scared because they were talking so badly about Republicans and saying anybody there that was wearing any kind of American flag on their appeal, uh, face mask or shirt was um, a Republican and a Trump supporter and talking terribly about Republicans. I couldn't even, there wasn't a time I came out and said I was a Republican because of it. And you know, I had to walk to my car. My car was on the top of the roof of the TCF center and it's an unlit area. Um, and you know, I'm, like I said, I have a family at home and it was, it, it's scary. Um, they are not a bipartisan company by far. Um, Nick was even talking about, um, Republicans this way, and this is a co-owner. So how are they a bipartisan company? That is a straight, straight lie. 
all the things that this guy said I have a list is, is a lie. They're, they're lies. And um, for somebody to be able to go up and just spew out a bunch of lies, he, and he admitted he was under oath. So um, we'll see. But, um, you know, hopefully they do something about this and hopefully they allow the American people to come out and question this guy, you know, um, and tell him that we know that he's lying. And, you know, and where's the rest of the people from Japan? Where's Nick? And, and, I don't know. I don't think I've ever told you this, but I did message because I have um, all their phone numbers from when I was working and we had to keep in contact through texting a lot um, those two days. Um, so I did text them a lot and uh, they all changed their numbers. So iPhones go through blue with a text. And when I text them, I said to Samuel, I said, aren't you going to come out and say anything? Are you going to come out and defend yourself on the allegations that are being made against you? You know, and I said to Nick, I said, when are you going to come out of hiding and talk, you know? And I said to China, which, um, her, she went by Danielle. She's also in my affidavit. Um, I, I said, Hey China, which I've never called her China. She went by Danielle. Like I said, I said, hey, China, don't you think you should probably come out and start talking because uh, you've worked for Dominion, Dominion for over three years and you're probably going to go to prison or something? Don't you think you should probably come out and start talking? None of them answered me. Not one of them. Yeah, well, it doesn't sound like they have much of an excuse. Um no, it's uh, it's really startling to to see how this has gone down and to uh, see the, the poor way that uh, people who stand up and, and speak up are treated. So, I think it's it's really a shame. Um, are there any other big points that you want to hit um, about uh, Polos and, and his testimony? Um, let me just look really quick because uh, I know that we are going to do another um, yeah deep dive session. Yeah, and I think that we can get into it um, a lot better then, which is probably going to be said tomorrow. Um, so let's see. Uh, oh, he he made he he said that they have nothing to do with the Department of Elections. Right. He said they have nothing to do with that. Well, if they have nothing to do with that, like I said, why did they send Samuel there for three hours to assist with these ballots? You know, he made that very clear that Dominion does not have anything to do with the Department of Elections. That's a lie. You know, uh, that's a blatant, blatant lie. Um, uh, I think that we should probably just go through this. Um, tomorrow okay but yeah the smartmatic thing that's a big one saying that they don't have anything to do with smartmatic that's a lie <laughs> i mean it's a, like i said why would you put it in your um in your binder for new employees all all the smartmatic uh software and how it works if you don't use it or utilize it in some way shape or form you right. know doesn't make any sense to me but Certainly doesn't. I don't know. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to speaking with you again tomorrow um, and taking some more notes on the video. Um, I do know that he uh, specifically said that he's not talking about any of his employees and they've been threatened and their lives have been threatened. I don't know how their lives have been threatened because they haven't came out and said anything, you know, so who's threatening them? Nobody really even knows their, their phone numbers besides their, besides their friends and family. I know I've been threatened. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it seemed like a ploy. It didn't, it didn't seem very sincere. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I doubt that Cynthia Johnson got the threats that she claims and I, I sincerely doubt that. Oh, I doubt that too. But uh, it, mm -hmm. it needs to work when you're on the. the if she side. if she did if she d if she did get those those um threats then why doesn't she why doesn't she play them for us? Right. 
or report them to the police. No. Correct. That's true. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Melissa. Um, we're going to get this up quick and then we will talk to you tomorrow. Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a